I met Austin, uh, gosh, six, six and a half years ago now, uh, working on the David Perdue campaign. Uh, and um, he has continued to work for Republican causes over the last uh, six years and continually uh, won. So we're glad to have him here with us today. How you doing, Austin? I'm doing great, Martha. It's good to be on with you. I was actually with Senator Perdue last night. I told him I was coming on air with you this morning, and he told me to give you his absolute best. And uh, I know he looks forward to being back on again soon. 50 days to go. Everything's heating up. Yeah, I tell you what, he is, as you know, we've supported him a long time, and he is really the best of what we have to offer in the fact that he is a successful business person that didn't have to do this and um, really led the way for outsiders uh, to be more involved in politics, and I think it makes things better. But we wanted yeah, to talk— if we, had 50, if we had 100 David Perdue's <laughs> up there, the, uh, the country would be a better place. Oh, You're amen no to that. It. Amen to that. Listen, so let's talk a little bit about state politics. I know that overall you yep. you were looking at state legislatures across the country, but specifically in Georgia, you know, while we do have the majority in Georgia, there are concerns about certain uh, seats that that might be in jeopardy. And, you know, quite frankly, you know, the, the speaker's taken a few hits and, and uh, we're in a place where we need a little help. So what is your view on um, how Georgia is going to be and what Georgia needs to do to be able to maintain control of the House of Representatives. Well, look, Georgia is a battleground state this year, no doubt about it. That's from the top of the ticket with the presidential. That's with the two U.S. Senate races, with congressional races, all the way down to the state house. We have a Republican majority in the Georgia state house right now. But when you look at the data, we could absolutely lose the majority this year. I don't think we're going to lose the majority because we've got a really great team together. We've got really great candidates. They're running good campaigns and RSLC's all in on it. We're going to make sure that that doesn't happen. But the data shows there's absolutely a path for the Democrats to take the Georgia State House if we were to go to sleep on this and not put in the work necessary. So what we've got to make sure of is when our Republicans come out to vote for Donald Trump, that they vote Republican all the way down the ballot. Because if they don't, we could lose in Georgia and uh, we'd lose this country and lose this state if, uh, if, if the Democrats take Georgia. Yeah. And tell us a little bit about what how we're going to be promoting people getting out to vote. Uh, I mean, I know how I look at it. I look I prefer to vote in person and I generally vote on Election Day unless I'm I'm working. Uh, but, you know, I think voting in person is the best way to vote. But um, obviously in Georgia, we can vote absentee also. Yeah, look, you and I agree on that. But here, here is, you know, we put our political hat on for a second. We've got to realize we just want people to vote. I yes. don't care if you're voting on Election Day or you're voting early, you're voting absentee, vote by mail, whatever. Just make sure you vote. Uh, because if you just sit here and complain about the early voting or something else, the Democrats are just going to keep banking votes away, and we're going to be so far behind on Election Day that we might not be able to catch up. So we just need to start encouraging everyone we know to get out and vote, bring your friends, bring your neighbors, bring everybody with you. Vote like the country is on the line, because it is. And well, uh, it doesn't matter how you vote, just get out and vote. Well, and in Georgia, they, you know, to the Democrats' credit, uh, they have fielded candidates across the board in races that they haven't fielded candidates in in a generation, really. And so, yeah. you know, we've got more competition. Now, I believe our our ideas are best. I believe that if yeah. we're up against somebody and we are saying what we believe and the Democrats are saying what they believe, I think it's a no-brainer, even in a so-called battleground state like Georgia, because I think when it comes right down to it, our ideas are the best. But you're right. we got to get out and vote. And we can't take it for granted that we've got competition this year. Oh, absolutely. I mean, look, you hit the nail on the head. These also aren't, you know, Zell Miller Democrats. These aren't even Roy Barn Democrats. What these are are people, there's at least a dozen candidates running in Georgia who make AOC look sane and moderate. <laughs> the people they've recruited this year are as far left as you can get. They don't represent Georgia, but if we aren't careful, they'll sneak up on us and pull off some surprise victories. So we've been sounding the alarm for months about Georgia. We've dumped in a bunch of money, resources, organizations. 
organization and time. And I think we're in good position right now, but we can't sleep over these next 50 days. We got to work nonstop from the top of the ticket all the way down to get the vote out. Now, we've had a couple of shakeups in a couple of congressional districts where, of course, the the tragic passing of John Lewis uh, created, and that wasn't a seat yep. Republicans were going to win, but there's also state house and state Senate seats that are affected by this. Then of course, last week, the end of last week, um, uh, uh, Tom Graves announced that he would be retiring at the end of October. That's not going to trigger any special elections. Thank goodness. But also the Democrat has, has taken himself out of the race. Um, so does that affect what you're having to do at all? as far as your state house races? You know, look, the, all those things we certainly have to keep an eye on, but what we've been telling our candidates from the very beginning, all across the country, is keep your head down and focus on what you can control. If you have the best campaign team, if you have the best message, you have the best plan, regardless of what's happening around you, you should be able to win. Keep your head down, raise the money, knock on the doors, talk to the voters, execute your game plan, and you should be able to win. And that's the same same thing with, you know, these congressional uh, changes that are happening and, you know, environmental changes that happen when the polls go up and the polls go down, all that fluctuation. As long as you keep your head down and you're focused on executing your plan, you should be able to be successful. Yeah, and I agree with you on that 100%, Austin. And like I said before, I believe when you put our ideas up against their ideas, that our ideas win. And I think they win with the majority of people. I know it's going to be a fight. We got to get everybody out to vote. Um, what do you want to leave folks with of what they need to know before they go vote in November? What they need to know is that uh, this is absolutely a competitive state. This is absolutely uh, a battleground for Republicans. This is not a sure win, both on the state legislative side, the Senate side, or the presidential side, and that anyone they know that is a good, like-minded conservative and a good Republican needs to come out and vote. And they should make it their mission over the next 50 days, your listeners should, not just to make a plan for themselves to go vote, but they need to figure out who are 10 other people they can take with them to vote. And, and voting by mail, absentee, early, in person, whatever it is, make sure that they put together a plan over the next 50 days to get as many of their friends, family, neighbors, colleagues, et cetera, out to vote, because that's what this is going to come down to. If you Don't look back to 2018 with our friend Governor Kemp and how close that was, it could be just as close again, if not closer. And we got to put in the work to get it done. And don't assume that your neighbor's going to vote just because you have. You got to talk to them about it, and it's the right thing to do. Hey, Austin Chambers, it's always great to talk to you. Thank Thank you for that positive and strong message. Martha, you're awesome. Good to be with you.